please use caution when using the following code. We are not responsible for any errors or damage that may occur. Errors may include accidentally deleting programs or files, moving icons, or extreme levels of frustration. Proceed with caution. All right, something fun today. Let's do some Python automation. For this, we're gonna need a library called PyAuto GUI. This lets your Python scripts control the mouse and keyboard. So to start, just gonna open a command line, pip install PyAuto GUI. Just let this run. Like always, we're gonna, we're gonna do some basics with it. Give you a general idea, and I wanna see what other people can do with this. You'll see it's kind of installing a few other things, Py message, some other stuff like that. I'll have a link to this in the description, but this is kind of useful. Examples, some tips, some basic rules of things. Main thing is talks about some fail safes. So when you're automating everything and letting the computer run everything that you can, it's got a fail safe that you can get rid of. Uh, it's recommended not to. Basically what you're gonna do is there's a tenth of a second delay every time it's called. If you need to stop the automation, you have to move your mouse into the closest corner of the monitor. So top left, top right. That should stop the automation. It's going to cause a fail safe or cause an error. You're also going to get into the basic controls, which you have to type in the commands to get it to click, move, drag, those type of things, along with the keyboard controls. So you want to type in some text, press some hotkeys. You want to, you want to use some shortcuts. All those you can use just from this one module. Right here on the screen here, I'm going to show these are the keyboard keys that it understands. So you can send all these commands and it will automatically put these in for you. Everything from all the letters, all the numbers, alt, command, function. But we're gonna have a little fun with this. So back in idle, we are going to start a new program. We're gonna make our automation in its own program here. We'll tie it into Jarvis later. As I said, we're gonna make a new file, start from scratch with this one. That way we can do some, test some automation and then tie it in later. So I decided to call this one, call it auto. Well, we'll just call it Jarvis auto. That sounds descriptive. We're gonna put it in the same folder that we're holding our current assistant program. Now we're gonna import pi auto GUI. We're also gonna import time. That'll be useful for pausing, creating little pauses in between our clicks so we can actually see what it's doing because it will click instantaneously and run this before we can even see it. I'm also going to put some little useful reminders here. I'm going to copy and paste the PyAuto GUI into the idle shell pretty often. Uh, you'll see why but this is how we can get that mouse icon program to pop up and we'll use that so when we need to we just copy and paste this into the shell that way we don't have to just keep looking for it back and forth. I do realize that I typed my mouse icon it should be mouse info so I'm just going to fix that real quick, but this is what we need, need to call that program. Back in the idle shell, we're going to import PyAuto GUI, just so we can use a couple of applications. First code in there, we're gonna get the size. This is the current size of the monitor that we're using. PyAuto GUI.size will get you the size of the monitor that you're using right now. This is copy and paste. We're gonna put this as just a reminder into some comments in our code. It's kind of something that could be useful depending on where we want to go later on you don't have you don't have to look this up again now we're going to pull up that mouse info little mini program and basically what the way this works is this has a few different options i'm currently on my second monitor and you can see that xy position is all negative if you go into my laptop, which is the primary monitor, it will be in the positives. But this tells you the exact position of your mouse cursor. We're gonna be using this a lot. We can dial in where we wanna click. I'm gonna take a second here and switch OBS over from the primary monitor to the secondary. And so we're gonna look at my laptop here. It's a little more cluttered, but the numbers will be all in the positives and it'll make more sense. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and find the location for the start button. So we're gonna kinda pick a number here. Looks like 24, 746 is what we need. The X and Y coordinates. So we jot that down, kinda move it to the side so we can still see it while we're scrolling. The idea is to find a program that doesn't move very frequently. Something that when you open it, it won't open different shapes and sizes each time. So the tiles in the start menu are a good option because they're pinned at certain places. The actual listing doesn't work too well because it, A, it scrolls, which you can scroll, but also if you install a program, it's gonna put it in there so 
if you just if you install something new a new game or of some sort and that pops up in g and you're looking for google chrome that's going to move the location of google chrome possibly and the whole program you made just won't work so things that are pinned to the start menu seem to work better for me so what we're going to do is we're going to try and open this groove music so this way we're actually going to click on the icon kind of jot it down some of those numbers so here's a little test just to for the start menu we hit pyautogy.click and we send it those x and y coordinates it should click right where we want it to go so this should click that start menu for us and just like that so what we're going to do is now use this as our starting code and we're going to make a small program that is going to click through from the start menu all the way to opening music and playing some music for us so put a lot of notations in there put a lot of little comments it's easy to get confused if you just have these in there so so this one clicks the start button now we got to figure out what we want to do so we want it to go from the start then we're going to click the music folder then we want to we're going to have to scroll down because it's going to open that folder up then we want to click the groove music icon then we want to wait for the program to start so wait for the app to open all right we're going to fix our typos here we're going to click the groove music icon so we're just going to basically have a few clicks to begin with so throw this one in here change that code to those locations to what we got before and let's run this and see what it does So this is hitting start and then going right into the photos here, which not quite what we want. So we need to look up the scrolling. So we got the click down. Now we want to scroll, which is just simply pyautogui.scroll. And it's a, you give it a positive number if you're going up, a negative number if you're going down. Let's say scroll negative 10 to see where it goes. We forgot to put our time dot sleep in, so it literally happens faster than we can see it. That's what happened just there. So time dot sleep, let's give it a half a second here, so we can at least kind of see what's going on. We'll give it half a second to scroll and half a second to click, so we can kind of at least see what it's doing. And what it's doing is it clicked on the pictures and it's opening up the pictures, so it's not going down long enough. I'm gonna fast forward the footage. What I'm doing here is going back and forth, trying to find the coordinates to scroll down to click the correct folder, to click the correct icon. And then there's gonna be even more of just going back and forth, trying to click the correct buttons in the UI for Groove to play music. I'm gonna fast forward through all that and show you the end result and explain the code that I got. Okay, so what I ended up with at the end, we imported PyAuto GUI, we imported time like before. I wrapped everything into a function. This is the play playlist function. Gonna click that start button, sleep for half a second, move the cursor to line it up, sleep for a second, scroll down, click the music folder, sleeping again, scroll down to the click music icon, click that, and then sleeps for a second. Should give enough time for it to open up that application. It's then gonna move over to where the playlist library is. I have a playlist of music I can play on YouTube and it's not gonna worry about copyright infringements or anything like that. So what it's gonna do is it sleep for a second, should load up that playlist, click the play button on, on the bottom. I also took some time and we can pause the song, we can do next song, clicks the next song and then clicks play to play that. We can do previous song, which actually right now all this does is just replay the current song. What we're going to do is create a main function, so it's going to do that playlist, it's going to sleep for 10 seconds, then it's going to pause that song, it's going to sleep for half a second more, and then it's going to play the next song. Let that play for 10 seconds, and then it's going to pause or stop that song. So this should be all automatic, and we're going to try it. Feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of sh come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise up. 
And there you go. That was automated, done completely by the computer. And we can just go through the same motions to automate anything that would involve any type of clicks. The only caveat is that you have to make sure that it is in the same location each time. So Groove always seems to load here on. So that's how I could get this one to work. In our original assistant program drivers, all you gotta do is go up to the imports and you're gonna hit from If I can spell Jarvis auto import. If you hit star, that is going to import everything. So I want to import all those things because we can use those later. We go down into our conversation flow. We got Jarvis saying play music. So if he says if music equals Scarlet Fire Rock, let's just add, let's use that dialogue flow thing we used before we can add another else if because with these we want to make sure that's one or the other we, unless we want to have multiple songs playing else if oh we can actually just have the else but in this ins instance so if anything other than those two things are said we want to play playlist and we'll give it and break so that should start that playlist Now, when it imports, it's going to pull everything in, including this main, which is going to run. So honestly, and comment all this out. You have something in here. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward me adding everything. We're going to run this. This is our assistant. Jarvis, play any type of music. Sounds like a good idea. I feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of sh come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise up, pause just so music. Me. Did what I had to do just to feed me. And there you go. He actually paused and started that. You can actually reword that if you want to. Pause. We'll just click that same button again. So my hands are away from the keyboard. I'm not touching anything. Jarvis, pause music. And what was left over I put towards my dreaming But the only thing in life right, that has meaning Are the Pause things music. you gotta work for, believe me Take to your that is a very basic example of some automation. I am going to play with this a lot more. Honestly, I have some ideas of automating everything that I can with this. So stick around, stay tuned for that. And until next time, everybody have a good day. Me. Take into your hands a plan your own hands can land your own brand and damn I feel like no one takes accountability they want the credibility convincingly unwilling to put in the f hours it takes to get some power don't be f***ing sour take a cold shower scream until you're louder work until you're prouder and f